right. Can we just get on with it, please? Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the meeting of the Board of Selectmen for Friday, February 15th. Thank you for coming. And uh, we don't have any Boy Scouts, but we have the Chiefs here, so I'll ask Chief Slim and Chief Lee if they'll lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I neglected to mention the board did not meet in executive session prior, prior to the opening of this meeting. So, uh, meeting being called to order, we have first our public forum. Are there any members of the public who would like to address the board? Seeing none. We can move to our um, our consent agenda, and there are two items for action. Item one, board minutes. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving the January 29, 2019 Board of Selectmen minutes. <coughs> and two, ambulance fund <coughs> gifts. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting an ambulance fund gift for $50 from Claire and Paul Wright in memory of Marge Wright. Um, would anyone like to ad address any of these individually? Or in the, if not, I will move for a motion to approve the consent agenda as stated. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, annual entertainment license, Marty's, 61 Main Street. The Hopkinton Board of Selectmen will consider approving an annual entertainment license application from Rachel Warrick on behalf of Marty's at 61 Main Street for outdoor public entertainment, including amplification systems for several outdoor events to be held on the grounds of 61 Main Street. Such events may include a food truck event, an annual spring fling, and an annual Oktoberfest. 100 or more patrons may be expected for some events. Now, uh, some of you may recall we uh, took this up at our previous selectmen's meeting, and at that point in time, there were um, a few pieces of, uh, of the submission that the town still needed to receive. At that point, the public hearing was closed. So what that means right now is that we cannot receive any additional new information. Um, the board has... Uh, I believe the materials that are required, and so as I understand it, if I am correct, Mr. Kamalo, we may discuss amongst ourselves the item, and then I think we may ask Ms. Ware for some details in crafting the approval, but not new information beyond what the board already has. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, in fact, to be specific, there were a couple of issues that the board um, requested clarification. Um, one was the, the litter control. Correct. Um, the second issue was um, laying the foundation um, of the conversation between uh, the applicant and the public safety um, personnel relative to public safety um, plans for the events that may be planned. Correct. There was also discussion about the number of events and the hours um, for the events? Yes. Now, are those the kind of details that we can discuss with the applicant as we craft the, the um, approval? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know um, that I've spoken with the police department who had a number of questions, and they, have, they feel satisfied um, that their concerns have been addressed. Um, so I don't think we need a whole lot more discussion on that other to include in the approval uh, the understanding that each event there will be a contact made with the police to work out event specific details beyond the general beyond the general plan and I think Ms. Warrick was planning on that from the start anyway. So, um, Rachel, you certainly may, may come up. We just we just can't do a whole get a whole lot of new information. We'll just discuss how we. How you put this together? And the letter control was submitted, reviewed by the Correct. DPW director, and he has no adverse comments. Correct. 
So are there comments amongst the board members about this? It appears that all the boxes are checked. So are you satisfied? I'm satisfied because I've talked with the police and the fire and the pieces that seem to be missing have been worked out with our public safety officials. So that was good. my biggest concern. Okay. And then, so if, if that, that would check, in my mind anyway, that would check off the litter, the traffic, and the public safety questions. Correct. That were still outstanding. The only thing that I think then would still be open, in my mind anyway, are the hours for the events, like a, a sort of a, a cutoff time anyway. I don't really care when it starts, but the Broad. evening end time, yeah. maybe we could talk about a little bit. And then just how many of these would we be looking at for this <coughs> next year coming up? So the cutoff, we would end at 8 because that would be dusk. You know, we can't, we can't do anything in the dark. Is that okay with you? That's fine with me. Okay. And I know you put in a no Sunday. You, you, you sent us the, the confirmation of the no Sunday. So we've We're got not doing right. anything on Sunday. Yeah. And no Sundays and ending at 8 o'clock works for you. That works for me. I don't know about my colleagues. Yeah. And then how about how many times a year would you want to do something? I know we have two scheduled right now. Okay. Um, Ideally, I'd like to have it open to that I could potentially do six to eight. I mean, which is still a lot. There's a lot that goes into these, and it t it's a lot on the store. It's a lot on me. So I can't see myself doing more than six, eight so maximum. Would six be okay? Six is perfect. I personally am comfortable with six. I think with eight, because you really can't do anything. Well, it's you a guess, small window we have. Yeah, February, March, January, February, March are kind of out. So then it's nine months if you did eight. That would be kind of a lot. But I think six every two months to do something, you know, is that okay? That's good with me. Okay, I, I'd be good with six. And, and, and to that point, I think at the previous hearing there was someone that mentioned, you know, if you, if you did it within the summer months of July and August, that could be every weekend, which right. could be a lot for right. the neighbors. So I think that's... Six works for me. So six and eight o'clock and no Sundays I think is great. I'm fine. Works for me. <clears throat> um, question, and I don't think it goes into the realm of getting new information, but just for the logistics of each of these things, the litter and all the rest, am I correct in assuming that since these individual ones, you're being good enough to provide the, the venue, but they're for individual <coughs> charities. So will some of this fall on the, I would hope, on the, on the, event organizers for your charity like if you're doing i don't know live forever and uh, to, to look after the litter and, and all and and the stuff I, I would think that some of these requirements would be borne by the person who's well, the beneficiary if, if yeah. marty's is doing this to help somebody yeah. that's we're doing this because we want to yeah. yeah one of our first ones if i may one of our first ones was a scholarship fund yeah. For the Canty family. So you can't really ask the Canty family to come come well, to police. No, it depends on who it is. I mean, I was just right. feeling that. I mean, you're asking Becky Canty to come and monitor trash? I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I'm not asking Becky Canty to come and monitor trash. I was just trying to express that the fact that you're being good enough to provide the venue that perhaps, depending on the organization, some of the responsibility or the contacts with the, with the police and fire if there are problems could go to the, the a contact person for that organization <coughs> If I could, please. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the annual entertainment license application as submitted by Marty's uh, at 61 Main Street uh, for entertainment events outdoors um, not to exceed six times per year, uh, not to run past 8 p.m. on any day that they are held, and not to be held on any Sundays in the course of the year. Second. Mr. Kamala had a comment. S suggestion. Um, that perhaps is part of the approval. Uh, the applicant is going to be required to educate whoever is managing the event on the conditions of the permit. Sure. That's what I was getting at. the last question. And, and, and in my motion, and that the applicant would communicate with the uh, charity event or charity organizers, you know, the responsibilities under the license. How's that? 
Yeah. So that's the accepted. Motion. That's what I was getting. And that's okay. the second in your accepted. Okay. I'm sorry. So a um, comment, if I could, please, to the applicant yes. now. So are you good with this? I'm great with it. With the motion that's on the table. Forget everything else. The motion on the table. You're good. Works for me. Okay. Great. To be clear, where I was going from was trying to, <laughs> trying to take a little of the responsibility off of you because you're being good enough to do this. So I think I think Mr. Kamala's addition is uh, makes that makes that clear. This is a welcome amendment to my motion. Mr. Thank you. Uh, do we want to have a limit how early it could start, like not before noon? Would I wouldn't. Do, I, you can say that. I would never start anything before noon. What, what, if the, what if a road race came to her and said they want to do a road race with her kind of coordinating and she's got six slots. Okay. And one of them could be a road race and you don't want that midday, you know? Sure. Okay. Is that right? Sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So how is that resolved? <coughs> Not Leave it open ended. Leave it open ended. And yeah. let because common sense prevail. <laughs> Right. Careful now. <laughs> well, one of the other things we have to keep in mind, which is to the chair, I'm sorry, is that it's, it's, a, it's a license. It can always be pulled. So when we're working on all of these, you know, we're, tr we're, tr we're trying to um, you know, make sure that we have control over all of it. If there's something that, that we don't approve of, we can always pull it, just like the liquor licenses and all other licenses. You can. So. Well, that, that's absolutely correct, but at the same time, you'd rather try to get things right from the start so that you don't have to do that. If there's some simple parameters that everybody can agree upon, you'd rather avoid that. So mm -hmm. I think that's what we've been doing here. So, Okay. Okay, there is a motion on the table. It has been seconded. Um, do we need that read, or are we pretty clear what we're voting on? Elaine, can you read that? To approve the license as submitted with the conditions that events end by 8 p.m., maximum of six events per year, no Sundays, and that the applicant communicate with the charity organizers the responsibilities under the license. All right. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you for coming back a second time. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, a good you too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item, banner over Main Street, uh, I believe that has been withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Correct? Okay. So this item will be no action item. All right. FY 20, Comprehensive Budget and Capital Budget Hearing. The Board of Selectmen will review the budget and capital requests of the Fire Department, Police Department, <coughs> Department of Public Works, <coughs> Engineering Facilities Department, and Information Technology Department. So, first up, the Fire Department. Chief. Thanks for having me. I had a couple pictures. Is it okay if I uh, displayed a couple? Go for it. Thank you very much. And just to start with my budget, if I can just uh, talk about the uh, objectives. Um, to deliver quality service in a safe, efficient, and effective manner and at a reasonable cost. Second, to focus on service delivery, employee development, community engagement, and community preparedness. And then uh, demonstrate results of improvement in delivery of effective response force. So the picture I threatened you with, uh, let's see if I can get this to go here. Oh. Most of what we're doing is um, it's, it's service delivery and it's personnel and um, here is one of our new uh, paramedics that was hired and he just finished uh, training at the fire academy. So that makes him um, street ready and um, I've covered for the last two years uh, effective response force and um, it, it takes us about a year to get somebody to that point and uh, here we were able to go out with Mr. Kamala and a few of our staff and uh, enjoy their graduation so 
um, it's a big deal and it's a long journey to get somebody street ready and then be effective in that equation. I'd just like to share that with you. I've talked about it in the last couple of years. What's his name? That is uh, Patrick Rahel. Yeah. Metals. Yeah. Um, so one of the stats, we just have a couple slides of stats. I'm not going to kill you here, I promise. Uh, but just the last couple of years, I've talked about effective response force. Uh, basically, the measures here that you're seeing, um, three data points, are the, the response is a request for service from the public. Um, the middle uh, ERF, or effective response force, that I measure um, is you can see in year one was 1823, and year two is 1921, and this year was 2136. Mm -hmm. And the one I talked to you a little more about is when we're not getting an effective response force out. And I talked to a lot about that last year, that I watch it, I get concerned by it, and it's kind of a measure to see uh, how we're doing. So that has crept up in the three year period that I've been drilling down. Basically what that is, is I look at every single request for service. I have a criteria list that shows whether we have an effective response force that goes out, and I give it a rating. So um, I'm trying in any way, based on input from you or best practices or feedback, to give a, a realistic picture of how we're doing. Any questions on that? Okay. Let me just ask, Chief, so what would you call a non-effective response? What, what are the factors that would make you feel the response was not as effective as you'd like? Sure, great point. So uh, a medical emergency is one of our largest categories. And if we had a, um, it's to meet the uh, standard of care that we're looking to deliver, deliver would be two paramedics and two um, basic life support units to do the call. So you might find yourself a little shorthanded. Yeah, if we were missing one of the paramedics or we didn't get a total of four to respond, um, that would come up as a no in the, in the rating. And, and um, I don't count mutual aid in because there's a time factor in there. So if, an Ash, if we're not available and an Ashland ambulance came and did the service, I give that a no. It's just too far in their response time model to say we are effectively um, getting to the call. Uh, we're trying to add that in in our equation. I've talked to you the last couple of years with one station and one response zone. It's a little challenging to have time be our enemy, but um, that, that's just kind of the rough part of it. Okay, thanks. Can we go back to the slide for a sec, please? Sure. So in 2016, we had, um, and maybe you're going to have something on this down the path here, I don't know. We had 2,131 2 responses, right? And how many employees do we have in 2016? We have added three since then, so we were had 24 firefighters for response. In 16? Yep. So that's 88 per firefighter. And now we have 2505 divided by how many? 27? Last year we would have had 26, and this year we had 27. 27. Is that 2505 for this year with the I'm 27? I'm sorry, flip flop that. It would have been one additional for the year before. And then we had two for this year. So it would have been uh, 25 in 17 and 27 in 18. So it's 92. So it's 92. The response, the number of responses per employee is going up. Okay. It is. And we have some capacity. I think this positive pieces to this data is um, we have capacity inside of these numbers to get, but it's the, it's the number that there isn't capacity is the one that I watch the most. Um, I, and I think we'll see that through the growth curve. Um, I talked to Mr. Kamawa a lot. There's certain times when you might get a lot more bang for your buck where we get, um, we might have zero paramedics available to respond and then you might have one when you hit two, that's when you get the yes. And that, that's where you get a little more return on investment and that's where we try to strategically place our staff. I think the reason our capacity has done so well is we've, put people during the high frequency times, these impact positions, and they're available for more calls, and therefore we get a higher result. So I think that's been a positive the way we've managed the system in the last three years. So and, not, we, and not everybody does that. If we didn't add the three firefighters between 16 and 18, uh, divided by 24, we'd have 105 responses per employee, which is a... Um, 20% almost differential there. 
you know, you stayed flat, so that would I can see how that would strain the heck out of us. Okay, thank you. Yep, and it's not a. I'm trying to find the perfect science. Everybody wants me to be able to say just one. I'm able to with the data. The next slide um, just gives you another little snapshot of it, and uh, hopefully it'll come up on the screen. Sleeping. There we go. So there's about 27 years of history in there, and three years of projection right at the end that I try to look out for you. And you can see the overlay of requests for service and firefighters, which is the math you were just doing. And um, you can see that our request for service has gone up dramatically since 2014, and we have been trying to match up somehow. And then just so, you know, this is okay view. It kind of shows our practice, but this, I'm trying to drill in deeper and show you this effective response force as kind of a better data point of saying whether we're really getting the results that we want. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's even further drilling that you can do and say, okay, is there a positive medical result? Did we put the fire out earlier? And that's stuff that Mr. Kamal and I kind of look at and say, where can we find this? Uh, how can we have the right data points or show that in an analysis somehow for you? So the numbers on the left there on the x-axis, that's, um, that's... Was it up um, there? All right. That's showing firefighters in the 35-person range. For 20, oh, that's 2025. I see. Got you. Yeah, I did a couple of accesses to overlay them. Yeah. Okay, but we're still close to showing. Oh, it's 2020. That's all right. Got it. And in projection here, I'm just again, it's not what we should do necessarily, but I'm just trying to show you a look outward. If we follow similar patterns, basically adding one firefighter per 500 people, and that tended to lay out every year at this current rate of growth. That just kind of gives us a look out. Now the danger of that is that in that same model, we're actually falling behind a little bit in effective response for so I'm worried that that's not, what I've just shown you there might not be enough. Um, but there's more ways we can look at it. Mm -hmm. To the chair. Um, so between uh, 2008 and 2015, there were some dips don't worry about it. Still, okay. There were some dips between 2008 and 2015. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, then, then, then we look at the, like, the legacy farms uh, development that has, and they have, uh, they, have uh, they have full fire suppression, don't they, in those? They do. So, and then, so that's what, so when you were showing the, the, the slide with the firefighters, mm -hmm. now those are firefighters, mm -hmm. or, or, those, or those EMTs also? Because that's what you were saying before, that most of the, most of the calls are uh, uh, EMT yep. as opposed to firefighters. I would yes. Oh, okay. Yep. One, We're right? hiring them as paramedics. We train them as firefighters. They cross straff the equipment. Because now I'm just because I'm just wondering if the, you know it, 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 you know you're projecting that that uh, that slope, but in, yes. that, in, in 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 actuality there could be a a, a dip that we don't. The uh, economy could change tomorrow. And, and different things can happen. So I'm just trying to give you a snapshot based on what okay. we're currently having. And, and I call the planning board. I watch um, any type of meetings to try to say what do we think the future will be. So um, nobody's calling for a, a level off right this second. And so I try not to look out too far. But uh, I haven't had anybody conflict the numbers yet. Mm -hmm. But you, see, but we're, you, you see this as a... As a on pace to do all right because you saw the the, the adding that the two um, uh, firefighters two years ago and then two more last year and so yep so we did one we added one two years ago and we added two last year <clears throat> um, we fell behind in the effective response force number and that was like one of my concerns I talked to you about last year mm -hmm. so um, I wouldn't want it so you were up to uh, 365 calls that we didn't provide an effective response for us. That's probably my number one concern, and I think I said that to you in the meeting last year. I, I, that worries me the most. Because we, we also oh, because we also cover 495 in the Mass Pike, don't we? Could, yep. Now, was there an uptick in any of the any of those? Because that gives a longer response time and, and everything else, and takes up a lot more time. Yep. I don't have that data point with me right this second, so I apologize. It's so it's on our um, risk list. Mm -hmm. When we analyze it, it's the they're as they improve it, they are limiting the access to the highway even more, which can add to these response times. Yeah, um, it, hopefully, it, they say they're making it safer, so hopefully that number will 
work its way down, but I don't know that yet. Yeah, so I'm just trying to point out that, yep. that it's it's not just the growth of our town, but also it's the it's the uh, number of uh, vehicles on, on, on the adjacent roads that we have to cover also, too. That it is, that. yep. It's a part of our response zone. Yep. Okay. Through the chair. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you had mentioned earlier that majority of the responses are medical emergencies. It's about 65 percent to okay. um, 35 percent right now. And is it is it uh, like weighted evenly amongst the population, or is it like you know we have an assisted f uh, living facility in town, um, we have some 55 plus um, dwellings. You know, is that weighted heavier, more responses there? And with the expansion of Golden Pond, is that something that we need to kind of factor in as, as additional responses that would be required? Yeah, I, I track all of those individually. Um, there has been an uptick in um, per room service. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there's been an up, uptick for the entire community also. Okay. So these graphs that you're showing us, um, takes all that into account the, yes. the projected growth yeah I didn't break those out um, they they do the, those individual units that you spoke to have gone up at a higher level okay. uh, they do impact us you know between them all that you kind of alluded to there's probably 400 requests for service uptick in the three-year period mm -hmm. um, but the community also had an uptick in, in mm -hmm. itself so it tends to be spread out some we we watch the individual units and try to just in preparedness any type of risk management we might be able to do a training with them that's stuff we kind of look at to see if we can impact the uh the numbers i'm i'd like to report to you that we're doing that we've held the numbers down somewhat based on that stuff but it's anecdotal at this point And then um, just the final slide, and you have the budget material as the, uh, the these are the, uh, the big movers on the right. There's three new firefighters that's in the proposal. There's a, a contractual, they settled a contract last year, a three-year contract that showed into this budget. There was a big move in a fuel transfer. There's some state requirements for some of the equipment we have in the ambulance that we have to do um, service agreements that we have no choice in, so that was an increase. Some fleet maintenance is probably one of my biggest costs that I have in my programs, and uh, it's the one that has challenged me the most, so I had bumped that up a little bit. Um, just some of the uniforms that go with the teams that we do and keep us professionally looking, and some of the new hires, I've ticked that up a little bit. And then emergency management, um, just a part of our communications program, I've seen a lot of the stuff that we're responsible for, and there is a need to do some maintenance and have some piece together plus we do some training together in our emergency management team and I'm just trying to open up something to begin to account for that currently um, I either pick it up or the police chief picks it up in between our budgets and if we really need to break it out and do some maintenance on specific emergency management equipment so that's it Just one, more, Pacino, one more question to the chair. <clears throat> Is there, are there major things that could help any of this response time other than FTEs that you left off your budget that um, uh, you think you may have needed to, in order to uh, help your situation? So I try to internally in what we do is, you know, uh, a perfect example is somebody asks all the time, you know, why does a fire engine go with an ambulance to a medical emergency type of a thing? We literally have done some uh, tips of our fire engine is actually an ambulance in rating. It has paramedic equipment. If it has a paramedic on it, it they, they have the ability to break off and handle another call. That's, that's kind of a choice we do and would potentially benefit us on getting an effective response force to another call earlier. So um, the ladder truck that we bought is a Quint. It has uh, it allowed us to downsize one pump, and it um, it has two capabilities in it. Those are kind of internal examples that I can think of. Um, a lot of it is about the main calls that we have. It's medical emergencies, and uh, having the paramedic availability to do that. We transitioned into that ten years ago. 
we were a one ambulance town we're trying to become a two ambulance town and it takes staff there's I don't know of another way to really get around that okay. so to that point and I know I asked you this one time before Chief, so can you explain the difference between if you need to take an ambulance plus a truck the difference between taking one of the standard <coughs> fire trucks on all these calls versus taking the ladder truck because the ladder truck is a huge item um, it's going to be a huge item to replace it's the last item you want to put unnecessary miles on mm -hmm. um, so I understand there are things that a fire engine brings along that the ambulance doesn't provide but can you just explain again why we can't take a <laughs> One of the lesser vehicles and avoid putting more miles on that very precious ladder truck so you it it has to do with you try to look at all the factors you just mentioned so the number of runs that piece of equipment can handle yeah the cost to operate it do you have you know re realize right now we have one company we have four or five people at the fire station so um, if they have to if they're in a car and this other call comes in they have to go try to get whatever piece of equipment there is to go so you're kind of weighing that out with a larger piece of equipment that has capability the driver goal for us is to be able to have the equipment you know it's you know we we rate efficiency as the person the right equipment the right training and they get there in a timely manner so if they're in a car and it's not equipped to extinguish a fire or it doesn't have the paramedic equipment in it um, or if they have to go back to the fire station, they're not traveling by, that you start to lose efficiencies, and you just check it with the cost and the frequency and, and make that decision. It's so many places that consider themselves progressive have made the decision. You design the ladder truck as big as it is to be more multi-purpose. You design the engine as big as it is to be more multi-purpose. So um, constantly the worries that you have, I have to look at them and see whether it's... Um, how we're doing in that category we very rarely have worn equipment out we are getting very busy now so that is going to be a more of a factor with the additional personnel we'll have an option where maybe we keep a company in service in a station while the other equipment is out so we're not without coverage we never had that luxury before it's the number of people to be effective to go to the medical you would have left one or none back at the station and they're just not effective so that's why we try to make it so we have a unit that has capability and can move I hope I'm not getting long-winded on you I'm passionate about this so yeah, no, no I, you guys do a fantastic job and, and I'm not here micromanaging your force I just I mean we don't just have the ladder truck we have other vehicles as well yep. so it's it's still sounding to me like the ladder trucks going on on every call and all those other vehicles are sitting there unused that okay whatever I just I don't quite understand still why the other vehicles can't get used to provide those support services why those are sitting and the ladder trucks the one that's doing all the work now yeah the, the ladder truck doesn't currently do the work in the future it probably would and that'll be dialogue I have it doesn't do the work right now it, it, it sits mostly it, it would go to alarm calls um, it went to a medical today just because there were two medicals and it was the second piece of equipment and we had the staffing but that's rare so I'm misunderstanding you then. when you go out in these medical calls you bring the ambulance and you bring another fire vehicle more often than not you're bringing one of the standard trucks it's it's engine four and it's a and it's also it can do everything it's a paramedic engine it's a fire engine it's not a ladder that's the one thing it doesn't have some people have multi-purposed all the way to that the ladder truck is the piece of equipment that can do everything so that's something yeah. we'll study for you okay I, I was under the impression yep. that the ladder truck was the one that was going to nope. all, the, nope. all the calls that's where my question was coming from okay other questions on the budget I think the numbers um, I did a little calculation here the numbers um, of additional firefighters with the projected numbers of calls maintains basically the same ratios so it seems to be logical it's just and in, in, in a clear example of our town is growing our budget is growing as a result but we're not we're not growing in excess mm -hmm. um, nor are we holding back too much either um, so today we can afford 
use that term loosely, uh, what, we're, what we're doing for growth. Someday this will become more of a problem. When the new growth slows down or stops and the budget keeps going, that's when we're going to have the problem. Sure. I don't see that for the next few years with what's going on in town growth-wise, but uh, I'm good for right now. Mr. Kamalo. Yeah, in, in fact, Mr. Hare, uh, in my conversations with the chief, the key driver behind the town manager support for the three firemen was exactly that, namely that the three firemen simply keep us on pace. They account for the gap that we have experienced over the past years. And at the same time, if we find them in FY20, we then don't lag behind that much. That was the key driver as to why the town manager decided to support the three farm. Yeah. And, and presumably, to your point, if the gross growth were to level off, the demand for services should <coughs> maintain at that level, we would hope. Should. Should. <laughs> But through you guys have crossed that bridge when you get so yeah, but contractual <laughs> obligations still go up. Sure. And then that, those are always the biggest uh, biggest drivers. So that's that's one of the reasons why new growth is necessary in the town because you have to keep up with itself. But you wouldn't be hiring more firefighters if you didn't have increase in population and increase in calls. Your services leveled off. No, but 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 uh, the the contractual obligations still go up, so that the budgets will still yeah, keep. Uh, to to Brian's point, the budgets are going to go up, whether or not on whether or not the growth in the town d d disappears. The budgets yeah. still go up, on the and then there's course. no more there's no more uh, ex um, excess money coming in. Mm -hmm. that we have, yeah, that we've been lucky to have the last few years. So capital. I speak to capital. Yeah, capital, please. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Let's go with capital. So, capital. We have um, car one is the replacement uh, piece that I have. It's a uh, Chevy Tahoe, 2011. It has 64,000 miles on it. It's my car. I got 196. <laughs> so that is um, again. I kind of say this about my all my capital equipment. We put together a 10-year capital plan. We try to balance out some of the cost um, and pick a, what we think is a best practice to keep a car in service. Uh, the luxury and why I defend it not going 186,000 miles is just this public safety piece. I, I work it hard and we're trying to not have it be out of service. Um, it, you can always get another year out of something when we're doing it, but we're trying to, we've always tried to stay away from that and come up with a spending plan. So um, I'm always open to listen, but the priority for me has been personnel. But that's kind of that's where this piece of capital falls in. The second piece is the um, fire station study. Um, we've had a lot of work on that, uh, especially in the last few weeks. Um, we are very, very, very close. How's that, Mr. Kamalo, to reporting out to you um, on on the fire station study and the need for further study. So um, I expect to have more dialogue with you in the next few weeks and, uh, and a report in your hands. So I don't want to overstate it until I <coughs> deliver it because I've had people looking at me waiting for a report. So mm -hmm. that's where that is if somebody has a question. <coughs> and then finally, we had the, um, the ladder truck is coming due. I put it in front of you this year to take a look. It's an expensive piece of equipment. It's something that I got. Um, used and it's treated us well so far and um, but unlike where believe it or not the biggest challenge with this is it's some of its designs and technology improvements for safety that they have over the years so again kind of to your point with some of your questions we it's not worn out yet but there's some real laggers being a 1999 um, I always worry about the braking it's had some braking issues the bottom of the truck design it it, um, it's not like the newer designs which account for grade better so this will bottom out some on some hills which has been a little bit of an issue for us and um, making the investment for this piece of equipment that we may analyze to do more services for us is why I put it kind of on the list so you can see it it's expensive it could go another year but I wanted to put it in front of you to say um, it's a lot to push out too so yeah, I noticed on your comments you said it has a few years of life left in it yep. and it is a big ticket item so yep um, 
Colonel, are we are we being asked to take positions on these, or at this point just to have an overview and questions? Uh, both. If 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 at any point the board feels that um, it has enough information and can take a position, I think it's important that that be done. Otherwise, will we revisit all these items closer to town meeting and, and, and take a definite position? We would rather revisit less of them. Less of them. <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah. I'll stop talking there. I get going and Mr. Kamala will kick me. I, I guess just because because of the amount of dollars we're talking about and um, you know, if it's got a little more time, I'm I'm a little hesitant to go in for a million dollar plus piece of equipment if we can get a little more out of it, but that's just me. Chief, is the the one point two number that we have there? Is that net of a trade? Oh, I should have that right off the top of my head. It is net the trade. I don't anticipate a lot in the trade. It could be sixty to a hundred. Really? Uh, I, I I'd love to tell you it was going to be way more than that because it's a beautiful truck, but the trade market has been rough lately, and I found that out with the ambulance. Okay. So it is including that. So it, I guess building on that. If it's a sixty thousand dollar, and and we think that the value to that truck is probably worth more than sixty thousand dollars, would it be advantageous to the town to maybe keep that as a second truck? Do we I don't think I don't know if we have the room for that, but um, yep. you know, rather than throw away an asset and, and lose a uh, you know a couple hundred thousand dollars in a trade, would maybe be would we have a, the, the ability to maybe have a second ladder truck? It, it's a great question. You would want to do that. Currently, we don't have the room, but we're talking about another fire station, and there is a time lag potentially on when this becomes in service. Um, so we could make that assessment. Yeah, for the if it's a sixty thousand dollar cash in, I think we should look at that hard. Yeah. yeah. I know Somebody we, else in the community might, you know, one of the neighboring communities might have an interest, and in, who knows? Yep. Okay. Tower truck. <laughs> on the. Chief's car um, with sixty-five thousand. Um, how many miles do you think you'd put on that in another year? And do you have an idea how many vehicles would be coming up for replacement? I know you know they all come up year upon year. So if we put that off, we're going to be looking at you know two or three instead of one. What would what would be coming up next year? And how many miles difference would a year make to wait on that? Sixty-five doesn't sound that high somehow. No, I'm hoping you have like the 10-year capital plan, and that's that's a part of what we looked at. Um, adding the second fire station in into the capital plan because there is a potential cost us to do a little bit of this jockeying around. Otherwise, you have the potential five years from now really looking at some big numbers all in one pile. So uh -huh. you can start to push out any of these items, but um, I think you'd have a problem there, and all of them are what their designed replacement would be. So it's. So eight years, sixty-five thousand is pretty much what your plan is for a vehicle. Yes. Okay. Yep. My, the chief's car doesn't tend to get as many miles as, say, a fire inspector, so that there might be some range there, but that would be normal. What do you put on it in a year usually? Do you know roughly? I, um, it may be a. I, I'd say uh, probably the same as Chief Clark, and we're the two drivers, so I'd say the math. I'd say eight thousand a year. By three. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I I don't think we can look at at a the chief's car any different than we look at a police cruiser or these other emergency response vehicles. If his goes down, or the police cruisers go down, or these other emergency things go down, it's not like he can run over to Hertz and rent one for uh, for a couple of days. So it needs to be very, um, you know, um, reliable, and uh, it needs to be ready to go at at a moment's notice. So. Um, I'm not a big fan of pushing things like this out, but you know it's the want versus need thing. We'll we'll figure it out once we look at it a little closer. In, in fact, if I may, through the chair, um, oh. early this year, I had a very unpleasant experience. One morning, driving into work, I saw our ambulance being pulled onto the bed of a tow truck, Ooh. and my call to the uh, acting chief, I think it was the deputy chief then, uh, confirmed that the ambulance broke down during a transport. Oh. 
Ooh. I can't have that. Yeah. No. Just worth asking the question so people know we're watching the dollars. Yep. <laughs> They get a lot of idle time, which is kind of the hidden piece to them, and it's not healthy for them to sit there and idle for right. four or five hours at a fire. Yep. And it's just, it's like a hidden yeah. Yeah. bad yep. thing for them. Yep. Minus 15 degrees, and you're mm -hmm. idling for four hours with water in a pump, and <clears throat> stuff tends to expand. Okay, are there other members on, uh, questions on the part of the board? Good for now? Everybody? Okay, then I guess that does it for the time being with the Chief. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next up would be Chief Lee. Please. Afternoon. Chief. I have an hour and a half long PowerPoint presentation, but I can hold off on that if you'd like. So <laughs> 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 uh, We'll skip the PowerPoints, Chief. Yeah. Yeah. I can also give you a quick summary on the police department and where we are, but, uh, or I can just get right down to brass tacks and give the uh, impact of the other budget if, you, if you'd like. Okay. So basically, uh, out of the sounds high, 12.7 increase uh, to the budget. 2.85 of those uh, represents uh, the addition of an education stipend. And I'll explain that a little further, uh, how that education stipend does have some positive results. 4.33 represents an additional position. And this is the uh, main ask in our budget other than contractual obligations. It's a good. position for a detective sergeant's position. We've increased and we're in the process of promoting two sergeants, one from the uh, position we picked up last year that will buttress the patrol force. Uh, we have a lot of young officers out there and uh, the goal is to uh, have as much supervision as possible. Uh, the new position that I'm asking for now to, is to head the detective division, but most importantly, it is to run the prosecution uh, division for the police department, which has a huge amount of responsibility. It's currently being done by Detective Burchard at this time. He does a great job, but usually in those positions, you want a bit of rank so you can over, uh, oversee, uh, respond to officers if they're not doing their cases in a timely manner, and have uh, proper paperwork that could lead to liability for the towns or loss of uh, important prosecutions. So we're asking uh, for this uh, position, which will also be able to, uh, on occasion, uh, buttress the uh, patrol force. Being a sergeant, uh, it'll be a Monday through Friday position, but I'll also have the ability to work overtime if another sergeant is not, is, is not available. Um, 4.89 represents uh, contractual increases of nine full-time offices, just basically moving up through their steps. There was a 2.9 increase in the admin salaries, which represents uh, merit raises. There is a 8.9 increase in overtime, which re represents the in increase of average overtime rate due to con uh, contractual uh, obligations. Uh, this will also absorb the anticipated cost of overtime for the uh, canine officer. Since the uh, personal budget now assumes the cost of the EMT stipend, the expense will be reduced and will eventually go away. As time uh, will put employees through attrition, uh, uh, I believe it's about nine or ten offices right now, but eventually uh, in the newer office on the job will not have that EMT stipend. And as I said before, as they retire, uh, that number will go down in the future. This is also true for the Quinnville. The educational costs are for senior offices uh, that had the Quinn bill in the past range from 10 to 25 percent of their salary. Uh, the new educational program that was negotiated now is at uh, uh, 6,000 for a bachelor's and 10,000 uh, for a master's annually. Uh, we have requested 6,000 for the expense of the canine, although we do have a grant for the canine. Um, 
it, it will expire over time uh, and this year there there are other uh, um, and as we move forward we are looking for uh, gifts and things that donations from the public but we just want to make sure that we have that cushion for this year uh, for the next fiscal year in case of uh, any type of unknown medical uh, situations and uh, assure us that we can uh, maintain the, the program properly uh, there has been also a additional request for 12,000 for additional expenses associated with the increase of maintenance as we now have a uh, Eden fleet uh, over the past several years we've seen that we've had to do uh, several more repairs to keep the, uh, the fleet up uh, hopefully in the future uh, if we continue back on what we used to have a, a, a schedule and, and keep that schedule up of replacing cruises uh, with a certain amount of mileage, we can avoid a lot of those costs. Uh, I'm sure you're aware the vehicles are now no longer a capital item, but they have been added uh, uh, to the operating budget. Mr. Just get some high level numbers from that and thank you for all the detail there so your budget this year is x dollars mm -hmm. what is the x dollars this year uh, the police budget this year is two million six hundred and fifty four four hundred and seventeen proposed for 20 is also oh, the number I gave was uh, for 20, 20 proposed for 20 and this year, Brian, is 2,403,658. So we're going hey, up. Add me there for a second, then you lost your Going up 200,000. Going, yeah. going up by 250,000. Going up by 250,000, which represents about a 9% increase. That's yeah, true. exactly. That's in personnel. And then in expenses, it's 311,540 uh, in 20 recommended. This year, 19 was 188,000. It's going up by 123,000. Okay, so then, and how many people are we adding? Um, one. What position? Okay. Yeah. And then promoting three? Uh, the deputy, promotions, uh, I just... De deputy, de I mean, Detective Sergeant and two regular sergeants? Uh, the uh, Deputy Chief's position uh, uh, is actually not figured in at this point okay. uh, to the budget until it's uh, rectified and we get the uh, position squared away. Okay. So, so, so with with this change in budget, which is percentage-wise significant, but like others, we've got this growth thing going on here, and with adding one additional person, um, and then sort of restructuring a few little th things here and there and the deputy chief and so on is your are you comfortable that your budget is staffed for 20s 20s size town absolutely as uh, you're all aware we do have uh, a situation with the uh, replacement of uh, eventually of, uh, of some offices uh, and once we uh, maintain that gold will be uh, adequately staffed of course, one of my goals is to begin the process of the strategic plan, and uh, we'll work together with the town uh, on the population growth, continue to look into our call uh, volume and status, and uh, see where, where we are. But right now, all indications uh, show us this year um, the need is more for a, instead of adding to the patrol force, is to uh, add to the department as a whole as it grows and we are prepared uh, for that future growth. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so is the, is the increase of 123,000 because, you, because you're putting the, the cars now into your, into your own budget and all that? Yes, the, uh, the, the, the total uh, cost for the uh, police cruises is uh, 135,634. No drone? No drone yet? <laughs> <laughs> Falling behind. He said he's taking gifts. He said he's accepting gifts. I know of someone that lives up in the DiCarlo area that might donate a drone. Dog find Gerald's cousin. Yeah, check with my cousin. Good. Are we good? Move on to capital then. 
At this time, I'm only uh, involved with uh, one capital project, uh, which was is uh, with uh, IT along with the uh, the fire chief for a new CAD system. I don't know if you wanted to do that now. What about no IT? What about your uh, yeah. jail cell floor repair? Yeah, that is uh, along with uh, facilities. Facilities is a. Uh, but that is something that is uh, truly needed, and Dave and I can explain. So it's that in the together. facilities budget for his building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Dave will speak to that eloquently. Mm -hmm. Well, you've also got there's also message reader boards that's under police, and then there's also a f item down here for what was it? Second floor renovation. Looks like there's no there's action on that. Not, no, oh, those, those are no action. Okay. <laughs> right. So that's something that uh, you know. Will be looked at in the future, and as far as the reader boards, we might be looking at some other options to uh, make those pur purchases. Okay, Chief, as you're building your budget and thinking through the personnel situations, and you know the deputy chief aside, because we did that, but um, some of the other moves that you're making, are you talking to the union folks at, at the same time and having them participate in that absolutely um, discovery process? Anything we do at the uh, police department, I've always uh, you know, strive for participatory management, and that's getting everyone involved in the police department as much as possible. Obviously, decisions have to be made at the top, but uh, for, for example, uh, we're going through the accreditation process, uh, and uh, Lieutenant Porter has a setup for a, uh, a mock inspection uh, coming in March, which is the turning point and, and uh, certification is right around the corner and then accreditation so uh, but the biggest thing is the implementation of all the policies and we sat down with the union and went through every policy and we're happy to say that uh, we took their feedback and uh, had uh, minimal minimal disagreements because they are CALEA and federal standards and it, the officers and the union they want what's best for the uh, police department as a whole to, to be the most professional but as far as the, any positions like that I certainly uh, sat down with the union and gone over that and to them it's a it's an extra sergeant spot it's an extra chance for someone to get a promotion in the future and uh, should have had their resume but <laughs> make us more <laughs> professional okay. and eventually what I would like for every officer is to uh, have the goal of moving up to the ranks and eventually striving for my position not too soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> okay, so there are really no specific capital items that we'll ask questions of you on. We'll stick to IT and facilities when they come up on those two things. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Chief. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you, Chief. All right. So, DPW, Mr. Westerling. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And if we are all putting our names out there for accepting gifts, the DPW will gladly take some gifts, too, if anyone has any. <laughs> but having said that, I'm happy to hit the highlights of our highway, water, sewer, and capital budgets. And if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to, to answer those. If we look at the highway budget, uh, we've got the standard contractual increases in our obligations to our union also got some increases in the uh, trash and recyclables collection and disposal. Um, we are putting forward the engineer, the, the consultant engineer's recommendation of investing $1.2 million in our pavement management plan. Last year we invested $1.1 million and as uh, as predicted by the engineer, our pavement condition index, we had a minor drop from 75.5 to 73.6. However, we are still overall in good condition. So we're asking for an additional $100,000 this year over last year to have a total investment of $1.2 million. So that's made up of $650,000 from state aid, chapter 90 funds, and 550,000 from the general budget. Um, one of the other things that is impacting us this year and moving forward is that the state has just enacted a new law, effective February 1st, which requires basically OSHA regulations to cover all municipal employees. 
that's DPW, police, fire, school, facilities. So there are some uh, increases in our expenditure budget that cover things like um, a trench box for when we're digging graves at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Currently, we, we, don't, <coughs> we don't use one, but now the law is required. And in the long run, these all help to help our, keep our employees safe and the residents that are safe working around our work zones. Mm -hmm. Um, so as we go through, there, there are nominal increases along the way. Um, one of the other ones that, that we are increasing is our tree warden budget. The tree removal budget was previously at $25,000. We are increasing that up to $50,000 to help manage uh, the trees that we have in town and some of the complaints about uh, tree removal. Um, we could spend a lot more than that, but uh, this year we benefited from Eversource in their work taking down roughly a quarter million dollars worth of trees to clear up their lines. Happy to answer any specifics that you might want to ask about the highway budget. What's a fair rating score for the roads? Let's see if that's in the report. Hold Is that like 65 or something? So I apologize, I don't have that here. I'm happy to provide that for you, though. Can you so there's, there's, there's excellent roads recorded by somebody or measured by somebody. There's good roads, which we fall into a good category. I assume there's fair roads, and then there's poor roads or something like kind of in that range, right? Correct. Okay. And the the somebody that moves around the state pretty much every day, as I did today, as you can tell by my attire, which is a couple of job sites. Um, there are towns with good roads, and there are towns you cross the line, and they are bad roads, or poor roads, whatever they call them. Um, I don't know if we need to be excellent in roads, because I'm not sure the, so there's a, if the ROI is the same as for some other things that your department does and others do. Um, but I don't think we want to have poor roads either. Um, so just a little food for thought, and there's, there's a little bit of maybe some wiggle room in that number. I, I don't know. Through the chair a number of years ago when i started here eight years ago as of yesterday thank you very much um appreciate, appreciate your continued support um but um we had a, a pci that was lower than it is today and we were investing eight hundred thousand dollars per year we increased that to a million dollars per year and we did that for several consecutive years last year we were able to increase it to 1.1 million dollars and our PCI, our Pavement Condition Index, went from somewhere in the upper 60s to 75.5 last year. So we did a great job with our investment. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't put in as much work on the roads every year because the cost of fuel goes up, the cost of bituminous concrete, everything goes up. Mm -hmm. um, but we were able to, I mean, 75 to 73.6 is a nominal. I don't think you would see that driving the roads. You wouldn't say, geez, what happened to our roads this year? Uh, but we're looking to stay ahead of the curve and keep that pavement condition index high. And also the other thing to worry about or to watch is our backlog. And the backlog is equal to if we took all the work that we had to do on the roads and did them tomorrow, what's that total value? Uh, right now our, our backlog is roughly $10 million. If we increase uh, the, the investment in our roads to the $1.2 million that we're asking for, even then, our, our PCI remains roughly the same, but the backlog goes up to $12 million. So we're still, we're not putting in as much as we should. Uh, that number is $1.5 million, but the 1.2 helps to keep our pavement condition index stable. If I may. Mr. Kamala, please. If Mr. Hayes, question. Uh, for reference, excellent condition is 88 to 100 PCI. Good condition is 68 to 87. Fair condition is 47 to 67. Poor condition is 21 to 46. And failed condition is 0 to 20. Okay, thank you. As you drop into that lower pavement condition index, more of your roads need the structural improvement as opposed to today where we're in a preventative maintenance overall. So you, your, your, your roads start to drop into a structural improvement area which is Potholes, ruts, uh, all needing full depth reconstruction. Other questions on the part of the board? 
I'm, I'm good. Did we, is this the, we, are we in capital also right All now? All right. Well, hearing none, then let's move on to capital. I'm sorry, real quick. Were there any personnel additions? Not in the highway department. I haven't done water and sewer yet. The <laughs> operating budgets, there is one in the water budget. But if you want to talk capital, I'm your pleasure. That was just the highway budget. I, I also have water and sewer. Okay. So just we do water and sewer and then we move to capital. Okay, so let's do all that together. Why don't you do the water part? Thank right? you very much. Yeah. Through the chair, our water budget, we are looking at a 5.9% increase. Uh, there are contractual obligations there, and we are also requesting one full-time employee for the Water Enterprise Fund. That has a staff of five employees, which hasn't changed over the past 10 years. Over the past 10 years, the number of uh, the number of meters has increased 24 percent. That's over the past 10 years. If you look at the more focused last five years, the number of customers has gone up 40 percent. And you can see that when we look at uh, Legacy Farms, when you look at the Muse, when you look at some of the other developments that we've seen. So we've had a 40 percent increase in the number of meters or customers without an increase in the number of full-time employees. So what that means for us is that it becomes more difficult for us to keep up with uh, the routine maintenance things like exercising our water gates, like painting our hydrants, like staying up with the 10% meter replacement. So we're, we're looking for uh, an increase of one full-time employee in the water enterprise. And if I may on that point, mm -hmm. sorry John, um, I'm actually involved in a conversation with John um, looking into whether I should be coming before the board uh, to ask if we can actually make this higher in FY19. The reason being the work is there, it needs to be done, and most fortunately for the town, the income from legacy farms um, relative to water connections is now coming to the town. So we, we have the funds to, to implement this. Well, in the final stages of our conversation, again, the idea here being I may come to the board and ask that we make this higher in FY19. Through the chair, thank you very much, Norman. Don't apologize for adding any beneficial information, please. Okay. Um, but Especially on his anniversary that we're not celebrating. <laughs> 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 However, as, as Norman uh, mentioned, uh, for illustrative purposes, we, are, we have had to pay back the developer of Legacy Farms for his portion of the water that he's earning from the Alperla Farms wells that he constructed, wells uh, two of the wells. Uh, so we, we have paid that back, and now the income from the new permits that are coming in, the town enjoys the benefit of receiving that income as opposed to it going back to the developer. Mm -hmm. So every new meter that comes online is over $4,000 towards our, our revenue stream. So. Yeah. so how are we doing with the uh, meter replacement? We are working diligently on that. I can have numbers for you. Um, but again, 10% it's, it's, uh, is an ambitious goal when you have more than 3,500 meters in town. Uh, that's, that's one a day. Uh, so we are doing the best we can with keeping up with that. Um, but again, the, as, as Norman stated, the work is there. The need is there now. So that's why we would, uh, we would welcome having that person brought on in FY19 if possible. No, if, 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 yeah, that, that would be not that I don't want to get into splitting hairs also. That would be a, a task that this person may be doing. Absolutely. Because that's one of the things that, that, that begins to start to pay for itself when we, when we find faulty meters. And, and then it also stops with, the, with our water loss and brings that number up so that the state allows us to pull more water out of the ground. Excellent points. What's the lifespan on those meters? How often do they need to be replaced? Uh, the older ones, they were recommending replacing them every 10 years, uh -huh. and that's our goal, is to replace them every, every 10 years. Uh, the, the newer ones read much more efficiently, and they last much longer because it's a different system inside. It's, it's no longer a spinning disk. Uh, they, they work off of uh, more, more of an electronic structure, so they're able to be more accurate and last longer and be more efficient. More questions. Now are we ready to move on to capital? Sewer. Mm -hmm. Sewer. Okay. sewer. And sewer? Yep, sewer. I forgot sewer. I thought you were doing water and sewer together. I'm sorry. 
Uh, thank you very much. Through the chair, we have a nominal increase in sewer. It's it's two percent, and that is primarily covering uh, increases contractual obligations to the employees. Uh, there's also a, a nominal increase in the amount that we are paying for the operation and maintenance of the Fruit Street water uh, wastewater treatment facility. As that facility is aging, we are seeing the need to replace parts, and the, those parts are becoming more expensive as we go through its aging process. And again, if I may, as I reported um, uh, to the board, when I presented the FY20 budget, both water and sewer um, funding sources anticipate rate increases. Thank you. So, so Madam Chair, if we could explore that a little bit, um, and we don't get a brain cramp and a major headache this fall sometime when we sit down and do these rates for those water and sewer enterprise funds. These are separate businesses within the business. Yes. These are businesses that operate off of the revenue that comes in from the uh, users, meaning if you're on town water, you're paying town water prices yep. to build a fund to operate the town water system. If you're on town sewer, same thing. And then we have these hearings or whatever it is we have with the consulting group later in the year. But you just mentioned 2% for sewer. So are we going to have a discussion about a 2% rate increase when we get to the sewer rate increases later this year? Or are we going to have a conversation about 10% rate increase and have all of our brains explode? Remember we had that happen a couple years ago. It was so much fun. Um, I've forgotten about it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, some of us haven't. Uh, I guess we want to make sure we're going to be in line between what we're talking about today and what we're talking about when we actually go to set the revenue stream for these two enterprise funds. Yeah. I, through I, the chair. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Be through quiet. the chair. <laughs> it's, it, it, yeah. So I, I don't believe. Oh, go ahead. Um, through the chair. Uh, Norman was kind enough to, uh, to bring to my attention. What I was talking about was the personnel services and expenses side is going up 2%. Uh, however, if you look at the overall budget for sewer enterprises, it is, um, what do you have for a number? Let me make sure I have the right one. Okay. Please. Okay. Failing um. the fund right now, isn't it? In one second. So, uh, so Mr. Westerling's been here for eight years. At what point is an employee vested? Is it ten? <laughs> in the public sector? Yes, that's a ten. No, 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 it's that's a ten years. Yeah. So I wanted you to think about that before you made your capital requests. <laughs> I'll come back to that number, sorry, John. I'm going yes. through the budgets. <laughs> yes. uh, through the chair, um, with regard to what we're going to be looking at for rate increases, uh, the vote that was taken at the special town meeting the other night to, to allow Lycan to open its doors will go a long way towards helping us in the long run. Uh, but when we saw when we saw the uh, the departure of Lonza and also water saving and efficiency measures that uh, Dell EMC has put into place, we saw a $60,000 drop in our revenue that was not expected. Uh, so that is a, that's a big hit to us. So when I'm talking about the expenses going up 2%, that's just on the expense side. It's expenses if, if the revenue, I know that I'm preaching to the choir, but if, if revenues don't match expenses and the revenues drop, then you're looking at what the potential increase is. So that, that was a big blow for us uh, and a hit to the revenue stream. And I know that Lons has been gone. They had been using water up until last year, so they must have still had some operations going on in there. But those, just those two alone, uh, in addition to the other uh, eight largest commercial or non-residential uses that we have, it was a big blow to the, to the revenue stream. My recollection is from the... Uh rate increase discussion last year, I think we may have raised like 5% or so, but the projections that Abrams Group put forth with the decline in revenues and the decline in retained earnings was it was not a healthy fund. We had quite a discussion here as to how much we could comfortably raise it 
I know some of us were in favor, Mr. Yes. Rule of I, of biting the bullet and raising a little more because the long-term projections are kind of grim for the sewer enterprise, I recall. But just the year before, I mean, just the year before, we had a surplus, and that's why I was, I was, I was uh, concerned with the numbers that the Abrams Group had given us because Remember the year before, that's when I, I was arguing that we should uh, reduce the rates because we had a lot, we had uh, like a million two in the, in the water budget and all of a sudden it seemed to evaporate and then we had to panic. So, that, that's, so that's why, to Mr. Hurst's point, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're setting up this business within the, within the business. Um, well, because one of the hardest things is, you know, we're always talking about conservation and everything else, and when people are conserving, we're not, uh, the, the town's not making any money. So, you know, which way, which way do we go? Do, you know, to be, a, to be a good citizen, do you use up enough water so that they, everybody, to the town, the taxes don't go up, or do you, are you a good citizen by conserving? So it's a, it's a tough thing when, when, when our commodity is, is water and our commodity is sewer. Well, my recollection of the sewer was there was a strong element of kicking the can down the road um, between, between reduced usage and projections. So anyway. Through the but, chair? Yes, Mr. Nesro, please. <clears throat> I realize that these are two separate funds, the water and the sewer funds. Uh, but when we have the conservation on the water end, obviously there's a hit on the sewer end, but is there a, is there a, a positive on the water side? Observing yeah, the through, the, through the chair, uh, that is a reduction in the amount of water that we're selling. Okay. So if people are conserving, which we applaud because it's good for the environment, it's good for our natural resources and our aquifers, especially at times during uh, drought or periods of low rain, uh, that doesn't help the business side because the revenues are down. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, we had a very rainy summer, so we didn't sell much water at all. Correct. Yeah. And not everybody's on public sewer either. <coughs> so we could use a couple, a, a couple new big businesses up on South Street, is what you're saying? That would help the, uh, that would help the sewer enterprise fund and its revenue stream to balance revenues and expenses. Yes. Flush more. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the bumper sticker now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Is the board happy right now on the overview of these budgets? Can we move to capital? Any more questions? I'm good. Okay. All right. Let's move on to capital. Uh, let's see. Replace DPW truck. Two of them. Uh, through the chair, we have uh, two in the highway department. Uh, the first one is a replacement of a 13-year-old F-550 dump truck that has uh, 95,000 miles on it, and it's received $20,000 in repairs. It's used on a daily basis, primarily in the cemeteries, preparing grave sites, and it's an integral part of our snow removal operations. And this is one of the trucks... Uh, if you'll recall, four years ago, we replaced the dump body on it to extend out the life of it, and we got another four years out of it. So we invested $11,000 in a dump body then, which gave us another three years of life. Uh, the dump body is in decent condition, but now it's the mechanics and the, the actual truck itself. Aluminum dump body? Uh, through the chair at that time, it was not an aluminum dump body. Am I reading this? Through the chair. Uh, Mr. Nusrell. Am I reading this correctly, that it was $27,000 worth of repairs? That's correct. Over the li life of the truck, it's received $27,000 worth of repairs. That's over the life of the truck? Correct. Okay. Through the chair, so are, are you getting the um, vehicle that we cut out of the budget last year? I mean, we, we cut a, uh, 
front end loader or something. Backhoe, I think yeah, the, back they got the backhoe. We re through the chair, we did receive the the backhoe. That was the one that was <coughs> positioned. Oh, okay, uh, good. Behind the the uh, mm -hmm. the MC um, selectman Ted zone at the at the at the uh, dedication. Thank you very much. You got it. Uh, this one, I believe, was one that we had up last year, and we put it off a year. Um, so that's that's one of the two. Uh, the second one is a replacement of a 10-year-old F-350 dump truck with 110,000 miles. That one is also a coincident and received $27,000 worth of repairs. And that's the truck that's used on a daily basis by the foreman who manages all the DPW field operations. It's also integral to the snow removal operations. And it's also equipped with a 100-gallon diesel fuel tank, and it fuels our loaders, backhoes, and sweepers, and sidewalks that are being used out in the field. Is that S3? Uh, that is correct. Yep. Okay. Uh, through the chair, to answer the previous question, the other S31, we are looking to replace that with a vehicle that has a stainless steel body that can be put on future, future chassis. Uh, this one that we're talking about right now, S3, does not have that. It doesn't have a dump body, but it will be sprayed with a, with a Rhino-type liner for its bed. To the chair. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Westling, S31 is being replaced? Correct. And that's, um, you said it had 95,000 miles on it? Correct. And what was the net on that? Or what was the cost on that? Uh, that one is eighty-two thousand dollars. And is that net? Like I asked the chief, is that net the trade? So we do have a trade estimate of uh, twenty-seven hundred dollars. So through Mr. Kamalu, or through the chair for Mr. Kamalu, as I said to the chief about the ladder truck, do we think that that truck, that five fifty, we could repurpose for like the trails, or you know, like that Mike Bolson needs a truck according to Mike Bolson. I don't know, I haven't looked too deeply into it because I don't get into the day-to-day -day stuff, but um, like for the stuff that he does, pulling a, if he was to pull a chipper or bring a gravel for the trails or, or maintenance, rather than ask a DPW, a, a truck and an operator and a, you know, a truck, a driver, an operator, blah, 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 if Mike Bolson can do that on the trails, can we repurpose that 550? I don't know if a 550 might even be too big for trail stuff, um, but so the the amount of money that we get for a trade in with this MHQ or whoever we're trading these to, we really I don't think we get enough bang for our buck for it. And I don't know I don't think you can put a for sale sign out and, and sell it privately. I don't know if you can or not, but um, I think that for twenty seven hundred dollars. It would be if we're going to replace that truck for twenty seven hundred dollars. We should we should be able to find another use for that rather than give away money on the trade. Um, we should be able to, to repurpose it and find another use in a different department, whether it's parks and rec, hauling volleyballs back and forth to wherever they need to go. It doesn't matter, but we should be able to to uh, because I, I think if if you were to go on Craigslist and you were to buy a, a truck of comparable year mileage and accessories. I think it would be a heck of a lot more than $2,700. Yeah. That, that, that point is well taken. Uh, it's part of our um, procedures when we are disposing of our town property. We have several vehicles that have been passed on down to facilities. Uh, and if this vehicle does qualify, uh, we would look into that. In terms of the trail management process, <coughs> We are always looking for opportunities to find appropriate vehicles to, to help in that regard. Um, as we know, the, the board recently put together a charge for the Trails Committee, and that's going to be one of the things that we'll be looking into. Okay. Yeah. All right. Who determines Makes sense. when you just said that we'll look into it? Who determines? We, we now have a very strong team. We have the department head who has the resource. We also have department heads who are looking for resources and other town boards that are looking for resources. And now we 
have uh, the chief procurement officer, that would be the team that would look into that. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a no, no, I'm good. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to talk about also because you know, 27, get, getting $2,700 back is no, just, no. it's okay. not enough. My goodness gracious. I'll buy it for $2,700. I'll buy it for 3000 Yeah. That's enough. It's violation. It, 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 yes. <laughs> and, and in fact, the, through the chair, the, 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 on that point, the message from the chief procurement officer is that uh, he's going to be recommending that we put this vehicles that we want to trade out if there are no needs in town uh, to be met by those vehicles that we put them out to bid good yeah. I'm happy. okay happier through the chair yes mr nasser this, this may be very naive uh, but are there any kind of leasing programs out there for these kind of vehicles the chair that's something that we can certainly look at in fact um, in one of the capital requests we are looking in, into a lease option and not specifically for DPW but for another department mm -hmm. we are looking into a lease option yeah cause it just seems like I mean if we're replacing these every 10 years um, Reliability. We could have a new vehicle every three years, brand new vehicle, and maybe at a lower cost. I'm not sure. It's it's why leasing cars has gotten so popular. <laughs> Correct. You know, you turn them in, though, they charge your fortune. You if you go over the line. <laughs> through the chair, if you have any other, uh, I have several capital items, but if you have a specific order, I'm happy to go through in in any order. Are we ready to move on to the capital items? I was already I was already looking at him so okay. all right then let's move to capital we can always come back if someone thinks of a question they forgot to ask uh, five-year sidewalk plan through the chair um, this is one that I am carrying the torch for uh, the, the planning board and the master plan this is uh, the result of a survey that was done by the planning board and what the recommendation was is $1.8 million worth of sidewalks, constructing sidewalks uh, on Hayden Row, 3,800 feet from EMC Park to Chestnut Street on the easterly side, on West Main Street, 4,200 feet from Lumber Street to Downey Street, on Wood Street, 500 feet from Proctor Street to Walker Street, and then on Wild Road, 200 feet from house number 11 to Briar Cliff Drive. I remember, I think this got de deferred last year. It was up there and we didn't fund it. Correct. Um, personally, I, I can understand the Hayden Row piece and I can understand the Lumber Street, Downey Street piece because that whole neighborhood has no way of connecting with that whole West Main Street area. Um, I know it's only a fraction of it, but, and again, I don't know what the rationale is behind this what went on with the planning board uh, sidewalk survey but I have a hard time understanding the Proctor to Walker Street piece and the wild to Briarcliff right now those just don't seem to be um, I guess I need some edification as to why those areas are are high tr sidewalk needing areas but Sure, you pick your Hayden Row. Oh, sure. Hayden, well, Hayden Road is a pretty darn no, busy no, street, I'm but Proctor from. to Walker Street, there's nothing down there. And it's the same thing with Briarcliff to Wild. It's into a little residential neighborhood that I, I, <coughs> I'm wondering if that could be reduced a little bit. I, I frankly fail to see the, personally don't quite understand. <laughs> Uh, through the chair, my understanding is that the one on Wood Street was to extend the, the sidewalks that we extended to the church and then to link that in with the sidewalks that were built in front of the DPW. So there's a piece between the church and the DPW and then extending it up to capture the new houses that were built on Wood Street and the neighborhood that would lead out of uh, Saddle Hill and Proctor. So it was an extension of existing and connection, connection of existing sidewalks. And then the one on Wild, on, uh, excuse me, on Wild Road, uh, there is a sidewalk network that leads all the way out to Chestnut, excuse me, along Chestnut to Hayden Row, but there's a, there's a small portion of sidewalk there that's missing, and it's, it's only 200 feet, so it's in front yeah, of two or three small, houses. Yeah, just, 
just me. Um, didn't we? So, how how much sidewalk did you say it was on Hayden Row from Chestnut to where EMC Park? From EMC Park to Chestnut Street. Didn't we determine last year that we had a sidewalk just on the other side of the road? But through the chair, that's correct. That's part of the rationale for why the sidewalks were put off. Uh, in, in last year was the second year, so this is the third year that it's come up for consideration. But yes, there is a continuous sidewalk that leads on the westerly side of Hayden Row along that same length. And then there is uh, a new pedestrian crossing that will be constructed as part of that uh, traffic signal installation at the intersection of Chestnut Street. So I thought that we decided last year that this was just going to be off the table altogether. With the sidewalk, I mean, we have a sidewalk 14 feet away or 20 feet away, however long it is. So why would we put another 3,300 feet of sidewalk? Yeah. Mr. Kamala? If I may, yes, I think last year um, there was consideration that there was an existing sidewalk on the other side of the street. However, taking a step back, when this idea came up originally, there was consideration of the fact that we were constructing a school in that location and that this sidewalk would also serve EMC Park. Um, and given the the, the 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 traffic on Hayden Row um, and the need to minimize you know um, crossings from one side of the street to the other, originally the idea was it would be beneficial for the community to have the sidewalks on both streets on, on both sides of the street. You said initially it was decided on that. Yes, that was the initial thought. So. We just did a million plus dollar traffic calming study on Hayden Road, did we not? Yeah, we did. And as part of that plan, we had contemplated having the sidewalks on both sides of the street. However, when we got to town meeting, uh, the okay. discussions eliminated the one on the other side of the street. So, yeah, to me, uh, the Hayden Road, I mean, we put it off last year because we had a sidewalk on the other side of the road we still have a sidewalk on the other side of the road. So uh, I'm not a fan of the Hayden Row, um, Chestnut Street. I'm, I'm, I just, I think that if we had a whole lot more surplus laying around, a lot of extra money laying around that we had to spend, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But we have crosswalks. Um, we've done the crosswalk, you know, we've done the traffic calming study, we've done, um, We've done our due diligence on that. I think the the want versus need. I think that that's the, in my eyes, that's the first thing that I would cut out would be the 3,300 square feet of, I mean, uh, running feet of uh, of sidewalk from Chestnut to Hayden Row. Um, and I also feel the same with Claire, where that Wild Road, there's not a whole lot of traffic in there. So uh, I think, uh, and and I'm not trying to just get the axe out and start cutting, but when I look globally at at all departments, which we have been, um, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll get the, we'll make our suggestions to, to, to cut certain things. And I just think that, uh, you know, where we do have one running right across the street, I, it, I don't see the, the immediate need for the sidewalk on the easterly side of Hayden Road. I would but, just, yeah, support what Mr. Titstone is, is saying that. I'm not opposed to sidewalk at all. I think there's a real need for sidewalk in this town. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe we should do uh, have a second look at some of the recommendations given other needs in town. For instance, I've gotten re you know a lot of requests from people about in extending the sidewalk that got started on Ash Street because how busy and dangerous and narrow Ash Street is and the number of residents is there, and I've always responded, well, there's a sidewalk plan, and we're working at it bit by bit. Not that any of these aren't, aren't good ideas, but, you know, maybe we should sort of reprioritize because, you know, to Mr. Ted Stone's point, if there is a sidewalk on one side, yeah, you could do si sidewalk down to Briarcliff, but is this the highest traffic area? I still don't, you know, get the Proctor Street thing that, you know, what, what's the burning need to connect to the church and the DPW when you're looking at something like Ash Street which is a very dangerous, narrow road. So I don't know. I, I'm in support of the sidewalk, 
I'm, I would just like to have a re-evaluation about where we can get the most bang for the buck and where it might be most needed. And I don't agree with the selected locations at this point in time. Maybe when the study was initially done, that seemed like the right idea. I think we should re-evaluate the, st the spots. Mr. Kamala, you've got a burning comment there, I can see. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think I, I, I hear the board's uh, member's position on this topic. Perhaps I think the take uh, should be, at least for me, John, to look at whether the sidewalk on Hayden Raw Street was on Hayden Raw. Jerry will not be happy if I say street. Hayden Raw um, was part of the traffic calming proposal. It wasn't. It was not. Okay. Well, to, to, to that, yeah. one of the ones that's most important um, to me is the safety of going under 495. Right now, we have no, I, you know, I see people, as I've come from the west side of the town all the time, and I see people walking along there, and I'm saying, my God, when they get to go under, when they have to go underneath that bridge. Well, that's the Lumber Street one. That, that's in there. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But... You know, so if we're starting to talk, you know, heading towards the west side of town, there were no sidewalks anywhere, no sidewalks on West Elm, no West Main Street. Mm -hmm. There's no way to walk or ride up for any kids to ride a bike anywhere out, anywhere past um, uh, past Lumber Street. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that that's to me that, that that's, that's vital for people to be able to go underneath the uh, 495 underpass. So it's the same idea to kind of maybe readjust our priorities. The Lumber Street, yeah. Downing Street connection is, is in this, but I just think there might be other parts of town. Mm -hmm. Through the chair again, this was something that, that's brought forward at a request of uh, the, the master plan and the planning board. Mm -hmm. So I think that it would be appropriate to bring it back through the planning board to have them reconsider and perhaps run another survey. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Okay, moving. Yep. moving on. Do you have uh, the next one that you want to? The next one here is sidewalk uh, bucket truck. Sidewalk tractor. So we are requesting okay. uh, for the third year, uh, one hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars for a new uh, multi-purpose municipal tractor with a plow, blower, and sander. Uh, the DPW removes snow and ice from a network of seventeen miles of sidewalk. Three miles of sidewalk were added in the last two years on Ash, Rafferty, West Main, and Elm Street. And we expect to add, uh, if that sidewalk plan is approved, uh, <laughs> even if it's not, we have uh, new sidewalks and legacy farms, mm -hmm. uh, which will undoubtedly be asked for by the residents to be plowed. Uh, the DPW can't remove the snow and ice from all these sidewalks in a timely manner with only two machines. It's uh, also a tremendous strain on the staff after they have been plowing for 16, 20, 24 hours to get into a machine, one of two machines, and do the streets, <coughs> adding an additional eight hours to their shift. So we're looking for a third machine so that we can clear uh, another group of sidewalks that, that's forthcoming, <coughs> and also to be able to clear the snow and ice from the sidewalks in a more timely and efficient manner. So uh, I think we all know that I'm definitely the cheap one on the board. Uh, I. There's no doubt in my mind that we need this. We do. Um, I, I, I can't, uh, as much as I'd like to cut everything in the world and keep our taxes low, we need this. We need this to get the schools open on time. We need this to, to take care of the additional sidewalk, and we need it so instead of two guys running these sidewalk plows for 10 hours after the storm, we can have three and they'd only run for six. So in my opinion, this is a no-brainer. Thank you. I'm with you. Any questions on the... Machine. Okay. okay, how about the bucket truck? The bucket truck. <coughs> you look like you wanted to say something? Yes. Are you reading your body language? No, I, I, um, yes, in <laughs> fact. <laughs> Mr. Kamal, please. I had a conversation with the procurements and grants manager um, late this afternoon, and I wanted to make sure that you had connected with Ben. Ben may have an update for us on the bucket truck. Oh, in the bucket truck. Yeah. Come on okay. up, Ben. Grab a seat. Yeah. As long as you got good news, you can speak forever. At the last count, I thought we were looking to buy a used one or something. All of a sudden, we're dropping 190 grand. So, through the chair, the initial placeholder was for $190,000 for a new 
fully equipped bucket truck. Uh, but we have learned that, and we knew, but we have learned that there are, uh, there's a market out there for used bucket trucks, which will bring it down somewhere in the $100,000 range. Uh, I think what my colleague here will, will sh well, I'll just let him share. Uh, sh sure. So uh, if, if I may, through, through yeah, the good news. <laughs> it's not uh, uh, So the 190000 is based on a, a truck that can go 70 feet in the air. Um, to get a used one, they fly off the market awfully quick. There's a very small used market. It's kind of like the market for a, a Honda Civic versus a ladder truck. They're just a lot fewer. If, if we bring that down 50 or 60, that opens it up to a lot more inventory, obviously a lot of um, better condition vehicles that are going to be on the market for longer. So uh, working with John to get to the appropriate height, um, we can definitely bring that number down substantially to get to the right vehicle. Okay. You're looking like, what, about half, you said? Maybe 100 instead of 190? Yeah. So it, 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 in summary, we're looking at the option of, instead of looking for a, um, a, a ladder truck that will go to Seven. 90 feet, we'll look for something that is lower than that. And then perhaps if we have any need, if we have any need for the 90 feet uh, a bucket truck, we look to the private contractors to do that. Yep. So th that's one other way I think that Ben is exploring to, to lower the cost. So what kind of height capacity are we talking about with the lesser vehicle? Instead of 70 or 90, we're looking at how much, how high will they go? Still pretty good? Sort of for the, I mean, I mean 50 at a minimum. Again, we could bring that price down, certainly close to 100,000, maybe a little bit lower. It would depend on the, on the market, the time that we're, that we're looking for it. For use vehicle. So, where is it? Are we allowed to, just like we talked about those other trucks that we trade in for nothing? Can we talk to these other towns that may be getting rid of one of those, that they're and buy it from them before they trade it in for twenty five hundred bucks instead of spending a hundred thousand? In in fact, <laughs> yes, we we can do that. Good. Um, Moving on. <laughs> the the. the one entity that I think we should look to is Eversource. I agree. Yeah, Absolutely. I think Eversource. I will not be the one negotiating that. I will not be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I may, too, another option is, is the federal surplus property. Yep. Yeah. Our very good equipment comes off, so we're, we're monitoring that as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, assuming we like the concept, but we don't like 190 grand, we'll see what you can do with that. Can we get a pump on it too, so the chief, the chief, <laughs> not multi-purpose. All right. Any more questions on the bucket? We good? Okay. Um, do we need to talk about the two, the sewer and water items here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Westerling, comprehensive sewer management plan? Sure thing. Yeah. Through the chair. Yep, yeah, please. Through the chair. This is uh, again the. I think this is the third year that we brought this forward. This is an update of the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan. Uh, it's $170,000. As we stated earlier, the Sewer Enterprise Fund needs some uh, life support in its business yes, plan. It does. And we believe that reevaluating the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan, which at this point is, uh, is 15 years old, uh, that we'd be able to look at what it, what it looks at is where we have the availability to provide sewer, what we have for sewer capacity, and what areas we would like to extend sewer. And uh, right now, it's a plan that was done again in 2004. The town has changed dramatically in that time. There are new areas that are looking to be developed. And updating this will give us a revised plan. We would meet with the planning board. We would meet with the Board of Selectmen, with the town manager, with the DPW, and all the other constituencies to see where sewers are needed and wanted and where we can provide sewers. So this is a, a plan that will help us to, to boost the, the business, up, business side of the sewer enterprise fund. It's a borrowing. New customers. customers. Correct. Okay. All right. All set on that, everybody? Okay, and there are two water article, articles, valve maintenance and replace DPW water department truck. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, uh, we are looking at a $65,000 valve maintenance trailer system. And what that is, it's essentially a trailer-mounted valve turning machine. It's a hydraulic machine, and it would be used for uh, two things. Right now, closing water gate valves during water main break emergencies is becoming more difficult due to their age. The oldest water gates that we have in the roadway are 130 years old, and it can take up to three hours to shut down water mains during an emergency. 
So if we have a break and we have a main that has to be shut down, two gates that are 130 years old, uh, it takes several men on each side of, of the bar to turn that and to shut that down. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that that's longer for customers to be without water supply. It means that we're wasting water that's running down the street. It means that we are scouring private property and town property and creating large trenches. Mm -hmm. uh, witness the one in, on Wood Street uh, just down from the DPW, which, which instead of just being a small trench, it ended up being a trench that was about 15 <coughs> feet wide and it extended across the entire length of the road because we had such a hard time shutting down that main. So this will help us to, uh, we, we can use it during emergencies to, to carefully close those gates and to carefully open them at the end. Um, and then it's also for ongoing maintenance of exercising those water gates. We can get out in the system. We can use the new full-time employee, put him on that thing and go out and actually exercise the gates so that they are all uh, better operable during emergencies and times of need. Truck. Uh, the final item is replacement of W7. It's a 15-year-old F350 pickup truck that has 150,000 miles on it. It's used on a, a daily basis by the water division and it's integral to our operations. It's also uh, the, the new vehicle will be equipped with a plow so that it can uh, plow uh, primarily the, the water and sewer enterprise pump stations and well areas, but also in times of need, help with parking lots and on the streets. Okay. And both of those are pay as you go. The Water Enterprise Fund has the money. Correct. Sewer Enterprise is a borrowing because it doesn't have the money. Okay. Any, more, any questions on the, these capital items underwater? Anyone? Okay, we're good. We're all 15 set. years old, I think it's. Yes, yeah, I think I, it's, it doesn't owe us much. Yeah, no. I'm not going to get much of a trade in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cents. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. Okay, Thank we're you. running real late here, so uh, okay. Thank you, um, engineering, Mr. Del Torrio. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Um, budget first, please. Any questions off right, or just, uh, shall I give a quick summary? Quick, quick summary. summary. Quick summary. <laughs> just um, tell us when the quarter of project's done. We're all set. Facilities budgets increasing uh, this year just from um, salary increases, uh, and mainly the, the bulk of the increases is for utilities for the two new buildings, uh, DPW and library. Um, that's probably close to 90% of the, the increase in the budget this year. Um, the initial models um, for the buildings uh, by the architects through the design engineers uh, is what we base the estimates on for these buildings for natural gas and for electricity. Um, both of those were, were coming up short, simply put. Um, initially, it could be ours, library. Um, I think the models might have been based on fewer hours and the library is actually open currently. Um, it's open a few late nights, uh, three nights a week, and I'm, I'm not sure the model included a Saturday. Um, so basically th that summarizes the, the increases for them. Um, we are looking into some energy savings, um, but we really only have um, four four or five utility bills, utility cycles that we, we have um, kind of post-construction. So again, we're kind of projecting some of this. I think we'll be able to, we, we do have a, an existing power purchase agreement. Um, there's a process, it's called a schedule. There's a schedule that gets attached to those. Um, I'm doing some rearranging this month to, you know, um, move some of these larger buildings onto that schedule because uh, DPW before and the library before weren't weren't huge utility users so they weren't on this um, schedule uh, but we're going to be removing a couple of the smaller and putting these two so I do think we'll have some energy savings <coughs> electricity savings um, solar panels that are on the DPW um, already saving um, we, we don't have the total amount <laughs> I won't talk about solar, um, but 
you know, that is providing some savings to the DPW. Otherwise, we would have had a, a larger request um, for the DPW facility. Through the chair, Dave, do you pay utilities for school department? I do. Okay. Just for, on the for water and that. sewer. For, uh, yeah. for water and sewer, we, we pay those utilities. <laughs> And I haven't asked for an increase for the marathon school. Um, I think we can, I could probably absorb that through some of the savings through, you know, we, we did a, an energy project for town buildings where we replaced all the LED lights um, mm -hmm. through a grant uh, and it was fully paid for. So all the town buildings, um, it retrofitted the existing lights with, retro, with, with LED lights now. So that's why I'm not, uh, I think those savings, um, will be realized, but it'll be taken up. Uh, the, the, it's estimated about $12,000, $15,000 might be the water and sewer bill for, for the new school based on the first first bills that we've been getting in for, uh, for the water. But you don't do the utilities, the electric utilities for the schools? I do not do the elect electric or the gas okay. for the schools. Seems the lights are on for all the high school <laughs> late at night. I wonder what's going on. Whole buildings lit up at 11 o'clock at night. But anyway, okay. Questions, clients? Well, Mr. Del Torre, I, I'd like to talk to you offline sometime about a center school gym. My problems that I have with it. I won't do it here because we all have a Friday night to live. But this is too. <laughs> Sure, I would love to have some conversations offline about center school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, are we ready to move on to capital then? Anybody? Okay, capital facilities. First item is town hall elevator controls. Yeah, the, the elevator controls, uh, elevator was, was put in with the original addition to town hall, in addition to renovation for town hall was in the ancient. The 80s, I believe. Yeah. So. It's, it's beyond um, the expected life. Um, when we did recently, we had the town hall, we had the electricity um, failure from the pole, um, where we, you know, the primaries coming from the pole actually shorted out in the, uh, the conduits that they, they come into the building. And so uh, when, when those were replaced, um, you know, we're starting to have issues with the elevator now that we have kind of a, an updated electrical system. Um, so. It's well overdue. Um, I, I have seventy-five thousand dollars in there. That was based on. We we went to do this. Uh, we had a capital request maybe four or five years ago um, to do to do this, um, but we've been pushing it off and pushing it off. Um, the new estimates are about. I got a new proposal. I submitted to Ben last week. Um, I finally I finally received it from uh, a call, elevator vendor, and it was in the mid ninety range. So. Um, Ultimately, I, if this request doesn't increase, um, final, final numbers, um, it'll be a little short. So um, I'm not sure to the town manager of how we, he, he, doesn't, he never likes increasing. <laughs> I get evil eye. Uh, we're, we're looking for other sources to kind of help fund, fund that shortfall, should it just well, I know, I know I did read that it said uh, it was expected 20-year lifespan, and this is 33 years old, so it looks like it's, uh, it's on its last legs. Yes. Yeah. We, we do have, we have some sort of power issue in the building okay. when, the, when the elevator gets called, so it, it's really needed, so. Uh, if we can just move back up. Uh, this was listed under police, but I know when we came to that, they said, oh, we ought to discuss it under facilities. This was the police jail cell floor for 45,970. Yes. Um, and, and I also noticed when I read the materials that under the quote from uh, this associate concrete coating, they said, much of the existing floor is well bonded in lieu of complete removal and replacement. They could put together a proposal to uh, patch and recoat the area that that could be provided. So maybe you can speak to that, and also the concept of maybe just doing a patch instead of a full a full uh, reconstruction. According to the quote, looks like they could uh, they could give us some numbers on just addressing the the failing areas, perhaps. So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, but maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, the 
from a from a facility standpoint, you know, the existing floor system, it's it's an <coughs> epoxy type adhesive that gets applied to the the base concrete floor. It really becomes kind of a a shell, uh, kind of like a a candy coating over a, an ice cream. Um, it starts breaking. Um, that's just an indication that it, you know, it's it's failing. Um, there was some movement in the building after it was constructed. There's some cracks in the in the flooring. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just settlement cracks. Mm -hmm. um, when that happens with that type of system, you know, there's no, not a whole lot of flexibility in these epoxy type systems. Um, so I just foresee, you know, more and more failure just occurring. Um, the second part of that is trying to patch something, um, especially the, the flooring type system. It's going to be really hard to match the existing system. Um, from not just from an aesthetic standpoint, but um, having an existing system um, bond to the new system, I think it's going to be a difficult kind of approach. Because typically, if you don't have the exact, it's like trying to mix paint five years later to, to match the old. <laughs> the colors will be off for sure. Again. <laughs> Aesthetically, that would be, just be well, I mean, not not good. But again, I think it's going to be real hard to try to patch this and make it properly adhere to the old system. Um, it, I mean, it's it's just, this may just be splitting splitting hairs. Mm -hmm. I, just, I don't really care about the aesthetics in a jail cell, quite frankly. <coughs> uh, it's not pretty. That's not that's not my problem. Um, I, I was just interested in the fact that the provider. No specifically said I can put together a quote to just do this. If it's, prop, if it's something structural where the whole system is failing and you're just going to be patching one thing after another, and maybe that may be the case, but I, I just was interested in the fact that the actual quote mentioned that they could perhaps do a recoding and stabilize it. Um, I'd be interested to know. I, I know part, part of that is probably based on when we initially talked to these folks who met them on site, we were talking 20 $20,000 range for this project and when they they came back with their proposals they were in the $35,000, $45,000 range so it was a double. So some of that I think might have been some backtracking. They still want to do some work for the town and make some money. Yeah, you can you can patch it and, and see what happens. Um, right now it would meet the, the police's need for the to meet their inspection. Um, I'm not sure what department it is. It's better uh, to help. Uh, actually falls under the uh, DOC, but uh, we feel <laughs> that's not step uh, into my office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've actually failed the inspection uh, just on that floor area two years in a row, and we've also had to close down two of our cell blocks for the last uh, year. Reason being, it's not like the normal chips of paint. It's big hard pieces of yeah. rubber that could be uh, formed, just breaking off a piece could be used as a, a shank or a yep. weapon against a police officer. So it's an officer's safety uh, uh, danger. And uh, the last thing we want is get to the point where they totally shut our whole cell block down, and then we'll have to deal with the issue of uh, transporting prisoners to other stations and things of that nature. No, I wasn't questioning at all the need, and it was justified in your application. Oh, I, uh, I, I was questioning whether we need to do the full month or not based on what was listed. So, yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. If, if um, having about six or seven years' experience working in this environment, um, you know, we don't need it to be uh, our clink to be love it or list it quality. I don't care what it looks like. Um, but... It, in working in that environment it's amazing what these guys can turn into weapons so uh, if the structural integrity if, if a piece of concrete can come in come come up and they can pull it up and and use it as a weapon against uh, someone that shouldn't be used against uh, we need themselves as well. yeah well uh, <laughs> um, then, then we absolutely uh, I, I think that this is something that should go on the on the front burner if it's uh, you know, the carpet doesn't match the drapes, well, don't commit a crime and you won't have to spend any time in our prison. Uh, sorry if, if it's uh, unsettling for you and you don't feel comfortable there. That's So, uh, you know, if it's structurally, you know, the epoxy comes up, I mean, the guys, the guys are crafty when it comes to stuff like that. I've seen stab wounds from a toothbrush, uh, 
you know, they're, they're very creative. But if it's aesthetics, I'm, I'm all for making it the least aesthetically pleasing possible to make these people not want to go there. Uh, if it's structural, then we absolutely have to take care of it. The, the, the uh, safety of our officers are paramount. Thank you. Other questions on the part of the board? Okay. All right, under, under capital, these two items that were listed are also listed as a no action, town hall parking lot and center school renovation, so. Yeah, if I may explain, um, town hall parking lot um, is still under discussion, negotiation, and then the center school renovation will awaiting a report back from the permanent building committee. Okay. Um, if, okay. if I could just ask you, Mr. Kamalo, on that center school renovation, I read the CPC proposal, and it also included a line about uh, assessing the evaluating town hall for continued use. Uh, my understanding was that town hall was one of the many user groups that was considering space availability at, ta at center school, but I wasn't aware that part of this was going to be evaluating town hall for continued use. This seems to be right into the concern Mr. Terry had, which I didn't buy into, but it's making me want to join Team Terry when I read that. Yeah, um, perhaps for clarity, our focus is on the basement. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's a different item here. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so again, um, also under no action, there was the uh, town hall basement renovation. So are we, this is, this is off the, which was $200,000 for facilities. So we're not going to discuss that? For now, the town manager is not recommending it. Okay. All right. Here you go. Then that does it. Well said for facilities? Good by me. Dave, have you been asked to prepare the next update for the Board of Selectmen on the downtown corridor project yet? Dave. 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 Quiet, please. <laughs> no, I wasn't I was just, just to <laughs> Have you been asked to prepare an update on the downtown corridor project? It, it, yeah, you can answer that. He knows. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Kamau has something he's got to say over there. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, I have. Yes, when are we going to see that? Um, I recommended to the town manager to do it um, one of the first meetings in March. Yeah. Um, I think there's a fifth first and a meetings 12th. in March. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think there's a fifth and a twelfth. Thank think. you for answering my question, Dave. Yes, yes, correction. Town hall uh, basement renovation. <laughs> the town manager does recommend it. Sorry, oh, but the capital capital improvement does yes. not. Yeah. So, do we want to ask Mr. Del Toro to just speak to that very quickly, since it is recommended yeah. by the town manager? This is the basement. Y yeah, the, uh, the basement project, maybe a few years ago, um, I, they all blending in now. Maybe four or five years ago, we had hired an architect um, to develop a, a few different options for reusing, uh, repurposing the basement area. Um, one of the options that we select is kind of create a centralized hallway um, and, and have the town use um, on the right uh, for either office space, meeting space, storage space. Um, and on the other side, we had a, a, another kind of combined meeting room with a, a, a kitchen area. Mm -hmm. um, the, the building no, no longer has just one, one area for, for staff for for kitchen area or for anything else. Um, the, the spaces on the second floor that was a kitchen um, has been used, tended to turn into office space. Uh, as well as meeting space, it was used as a meeting space. So it's kind of to create meeting space, office space, um, uh, and, and uh, a kitchen area. Uh, and that's kind of the layout. And it's to maintain um, the uh, accessibility route for town halls, obviously, from the ramp um, through that area. Um, in order to do that, there, there's a, a renovation needed for, for all the building systems, um, providing um, heating and cooling to both sides, as well as to the centralized hallway, um, lighting, sprinkler <coughs> systems, um, IT. Um, and it's all, I think about $500 a square foot was about the estimate. I think the original um, report recommended using. Well, it was a little less than that, but based on the town hall project um, and how much that cost to do, um, 
IT and some of the HVAC work just becomes very costly. Because it's, it's getting a little bit of use now, but it's really underutilized. Yeah, right now it's, it's used as a makeshift yeah. office space when, when there's somewhere you need a large group of people to meet. Um, but the heating in there is, <laughs> is insufficient for the, for the use. So the two hundred thousand dollars listed here is that just for study, or would that be to actually start no? That any would work? be to you know to renovate the entire area. There's no work. It's new walls. It's you know once you once you put up walls, um, you interrupt the sprinkler coverage, you interrupt the lighting system, you interrupt the fire alarm system, right, um, right. Yeah, the cooling system. So so it, it's all of those systems. It's not simply putting up a couple partitions and. And that's it. Right, but the money requested is not for a study. The money no, requested no. is actually to get some construction, Correct. Some, Correct. something, getting something done. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, we good? good. Ready? All right, it's ten after five. Thanks. Are you all set, Mr. Kamal? We're good. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Del And la yeah, no, yes, IT. I'm thinking in terms of Dave. We have uh, IT. 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 <clears throat> right. Yeah. So you want Dave to stick around for IT? Yes. That's what you're saying? Okay. okay. Josh? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Move to the co-pilot seat. So late. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good afternoon. Mr. Brissett, thanks for waiting. Okay. Well, I'll follow suit and start with operating. Please. Move to capital. Um, so the uh, IT expense budget is... Um, Asking for an increase of forty-three thousand dollars over fiscal nineteen. Um, roughly, the breakdown of that is that twenty-three thousand can be attributed to three new um, multifunction copier scanner printer machines um, that we'd be purchasing outright, as opposed to leasing, um, as we've we've sometimes done in the past. Um, the remainder of the increase is uh, attributed to $25,000 in um, new or enhanced services, uh, namely uh, a newer upgraded version of an online records and scanning tool. Um, this was a software as a service model that we received funding from CPC for the first year um, specific to the cemetery online records uh, project. Um, uh, some of the other notable increases or, or new services would be uh, maintenance and support for the recent security upgrades at police and fire. This is for the um, badging systems and the camera systems. Uh, the first year of maintenance and support was included with the with the capital purchase, and so at this point we're running into um, we're running off of that that first year capital purchase and into ongoing maintenance and support. Um, as well as a, an increase in our um, social media records retention tool um, to ensure that we're compliant with all town social media um, records being archived. Um, the difference that you see between the, the 23,000 and 25,000 that I talked about there um, being a total of $48,000 increase um, we're realizing uh, approximately five thousand dollars in savings in other areas um, through contract negotiations, um, smart purchasing. Questions? Okay. Then let's just move right on to capital. Um, the security cameras, I know when Amy Beck was here last time, we asked her a little bit about this. So I think we have a little background <coughs> on it, but give us a rundown. I think you're reducing the number of cameras a little bit from the initial request. Could, correct. So there was originally a, um, a single submission bundled article for a total of um, $70,965. Um, which was made up of, of three parts, roughly $33,000 for a senior center uh, camera system, uh, approximately $32,000 for a library camera system, 
and then approximately twelve thousand um, dollars for a couple of enhancements uh, and a, a camera upgrade potentially one to two camera relocations of existing cameras at the police station um, based on feedback from uh, CIC we uh, went back and decreased the ask um, for the senior center cameras essentially eliminating a, a number of cameras from the original proposal um, working with the police department uh, and Amy in terms of level of comfort with kind of a, a more minimal approach uh, in terms of the cameras for the senior center um, so after doing that we, we broke out the senior center camera security system separate um, from the original price of around 33,000 down to a new ask of $23,195. So although that's below the $25,000 limit for um, CIC, we wanted to be clear um, and transparent about the, about the price, and that's why we're still leaving that on as a, as a capital request. Um, and, then, and then from that, we bundled, um, we continued to bundle the, the two other, the, the library and the police. Um, so the, the prices there did not change, um, but those are together as a separate submission for $43,830. Questions from the board on those items? No. Okay, no. end user hardware replacement for 43750 End user hardware replacement, this is a yearly recurring uh, capital expense. Um, just getting ahead of and, and staying on top of normal expected refresh cycles um, for laptops and desktops for employees. So rather than um, being in a situation where you know we say we're going to go every four years and then try to replace all the computers in town at once, um, you know that gets expensive for that every four years, and it's also <coughs> from a um, from a manpower standpoint, we just we don't have the staff to try to support all computers in town in one fell swoop. So we we try to normalize that distribution um, over an average lifespan of a, a laptop being three and a half years and a desktop being five years. Okay. And under borrowing capital, borrowing public safety software upgrade for three hundred and seventy-five thousand. So if I may? Yes, Mr. Kamalo, please. Through the chair, um, I think for, for the public's information, the data center replacement project 205, that's a joint town school. <coughs> the what? West. Where is that? The uh, number 14, data center replacement. Oh, it's so under school, but yes. okay, is yeah. an IT thing. Could, for clarity, I think it's... Correct. For, yeah. For clarity, that is a joint article between town and school to replace the existing shared data center um, between town and school. Okay. And public safety? Yeah, public safety. This is um, to replace <coughs> our public safety um, records management and um, computer-aided dispatch system. Um, we, we found out that the, the existing system that we have today is, is um, the, the vendor is, is going to stop um, offering support development and enhancements for that system. Um, the town went through an exercise, I believe it was approximately five or six years ago um, proactively to look at options to upgrade and, or replace the existing system um, made the determination at that time um, that the situation that we were in the price didn't justify the spend wasn't worth it at that point um, so we're, we're looking to revisit that at this point uh, to make sure that we have a, a computer aided dispatch and a record system that is actively managed and supported by the vendor but if the provider's going away, we have no choice. We, we have to do this. Yes. Yes. Um, I mean, f to be clear, uh, it, it is not an outsourced software as a service model. So the, the vendor support development enhancements um, goes away. The existing system, um, you know, barring any problems, could 
problems continue to work um, right but I think as uh, mr. Ted Stone said earlier you know if the chief's car stops working you can't go around the corner overnight and, and lease a new one I think it's same kind of thing here if we have a catastrophic issue with the Especially since Records. Radio Shack closed. It's, yeah, 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 this isn't something I can fix with a little, you know, welding machiners. So we're living on the edge. Bob Slammon could fix it. <laughs> on the edge. Bob Slammon could fix it. Um, so I, I just wanted yeah. to be clear about that point that, that y yes, it's not as if on day one um, the system would cease to function, but the concern certainly is that were we to have any issue, there's... there's We'd be in big trouble. Co correct. Okay. Okay. Does the board have any questions on these items? Okay. Your co-pilot over there, Mr. Del Torrio, he's happy. Nothing to add. He's happy. All right. Seeing as it's 20 after 5. Motion to adjourn. In good shape. So can I have a Thank quick you. question? Oh, okay. Mr. Her. So Mr. Kamal, on the revenue side of the overall budget with your colleagues still here this afternoon, we're looking at a 2.5% Prop two and a half increase, correct? Yes. What was the uh, excess levy increase or number that we're going to use percentage wise? Percentage wise. Was it 2.3? I'll tell you in one second. And also new growth if you're looking in there at the same time. What are those three numbers? levy we were using 445 if I'm reading this correctly and that's point zero nine percent so we're using point nine percent for the excess levy correct yes okay two point five and a prop two and a half yes and then what was new growth new growth is three point one three point one yeah. Are those numbers different than what we got a couple of weeks ago? I'm okay if they are. I'm just were they something different than that a couple of weeks ago? No, I, pre I believe these numbers have not changed. No. So adding that up, it's 2.5, 3.4, 6.5%, correct? With those three percentages anyway. Yes, 6.5, yep. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. So we're all set with IT. Everybody's happy? All right. Thank you, Mr. Grissetti. Uh, yes, Mr. Kamala? I'm all set. Okay. Uh, liaison reports uh, sounds like Mr. Kamala yes. has, uh, Mr. Uh, Coutinho has something he'd like to add about liaisons. Mr. Mm -hmm. Coutinho? Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I, I went to a couple of uh, chamber events, uh, or chamber meetings, um, and the, um, Chamber as well as the new and improved Economic Development uh, Council would like to uh, come um, sit with us uh, in, in one of the meetings in March. Uh, they want to um, talk about uh, South Street and attracting new development there, um, speed to market for the new projects, zoning and infrastructure that attracts rather than deters uh, new companies. And they want to bring some of the, some ideas and paths to correcting our uh, commercial and residential uh, tax imbalance, to try and bring up some, uh, to just to, to bring more companies to Hopkinton. And so they'd like to know if they could come meet with us in either the fifth or the or the fifth. See what the agenda looks like. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can be a picked agenda. Yeah. Any other reports? Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in until 530 on that. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks.